OK, so um, if we took a look at the other aspects of the EU, yeah, it's worth, uh, again, it's worth moving beyond just the four freedoms to point out that the EU, as we said, it's a fiscal entity and, and it's a club yeah, in which, you know, in which there are joining processes and, and those have those have impacts. So if we take if we take the EU budget, um, as I said, it's kind of um, it's somewhere in the region of you know, again 180 to 200 billion um, euros per year. Um, the extent to which you're going to get that uh, depends on the you know, so, so how much of that you're going to get depends on your economic structure because it tends to go into areas like agriculture. So if you have a large agricultural sector, you know, you're more likely to be um, getting a share of this money, a, a net recipient. So countries like Greece and so on, with you know, and Spain with big agricultural sectors, they tend to benefit. Um, it goes into infrastructure, um, but that tends to go into low income regions. So if you tend to have a large number of um, or if you have parts of your economy where um, average incomes, average wages are well below the EU average and it's got weak infrastructure, then you're going to benefit. So again, it's likely to benefit countries that are relatively low income. Um, and science and technology. So that that one tends to benefit um, countries with kind of you know, big research projects, um, you know, kind of universities and so on and so forth. Um, Taken as a whole, um, if you look at the two extreme cases, um, Germany, you know, which is a relatively, well, sorry, is a, you know, a, a rich and developed economy, you know, um, then they're paying about 25 billion euros per year they pay. Take the opposite end, Poland, you know, um, yeah, which I mean, it's not a poor country of any means, but um, overall, because of the structure of the Polish economy, then per year, they're taking about 11 billion euros out. Yeah, so they, they get, yeah, they receive about 11 billion euros um, a year out of that. So the impact, yeah, the effect of the EU budget is to tend to cost high income, well-developed economies um, and pay towards lower income, less developed economies, which you know, depends on your perspective, doesn't it? But um, it should lead to you know, a gradual catching up process um, of those economies that are relatively poor and less developed. Um, and they've said the last, the last aspect of it. We talked about this briefly elsewhere, but you know the kind of join, joining pro process. Yeah, you know, we talked about. You know, we talked about the Copenhagen criteria. Um, the main point about this yeah, is that if you want to join, this isn't going to be. You know, this isn't going to be five minute rice. Yeah, um, it's yeah, it's it's a very lengthy process to join. Yeah, because you're focusing on institutional reform, um, and we said it's about getting. Yeah. You know, political stability about having um, a strong market economy it's about having yeah it's about having rights yeah um, and obviously it's about adopting it's about adopting EU law and all that yeah all that takes yeah um, yeah a hell of a long time um, in terms of the extent to which that's yeah that's going to be beneficial um, in the end um, you're going to get yeah, you're going to get you know, better, um, you know, better kind of labour laws. Um, yeah, so it's going to be better for workers. You're going to have a better environment. Um, but um, yeah, as, we, as as I think I said elsewhere, yeah, the process of adopting all these laws um, is, you know, on the other hand, um, it, it is quite costly you know, um, for businesses. Um, the process of creating better political institutions and so on, what it should do yeah, is it should it should lead to an increase in transparency overall um, because strong political institutions tend to be um, transparent ones. And therefore, hopefully, you would expect um, to see on average better governance. But obviously, there's still corruption um, that occurs across the EU. I mean, as, as it does everywhere. But you would hope. Yeah, that an increase in transparency should lead to better governance um, and a decrease in corruption. But yeah, you know, some people will say that's that's not true. But corruption is you know, corruption is kind of um, all you know kind of um, all relative. Um, so pluses and minuses there as well. Yeah, but but if I so if I'm writing about the EU, on the one hand, you've got to focus on the four freedoms and make it really clear that you understand it's a single market. Don't talk about the Eurozone um, unless you make it really clear that not all EU members are, are part of the Eurozone. Um, so, but, but best steer clear of it. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and 
focus on these other aspects that aren't just the single market to give yourself this idea that you've got a kind of rounded, coherent understanding.